Now, there are some fundamental trigonometric identities that you need to know. What we're going to talk about first is the reciprocal identity. Now, when you think of the word reciprocal, what do you think that means? For example, what is the reciprocal of 7? The reciprocal of 7 is 1 over 7. So now, how does this relate to trig? So what is the reciprocal of sine? The reciprocal of sine theta is cosecant. Sine is 1 divided by cosecant, and cosecant is 1 over sine. Now, this identity here is the one that you're going to use more often. If you have sine, for the most part, you won't need to change it to cosecant. But if you have cosecant, a lot of times you will change it back into sine. The reciprocal identity of secant theta is 1 divided by cosine. That's another one that you need to know. And if I was you, hopefully you have a notebook, you want to write down these formulas because you will use them a lot throughout your trig um, <laughs> your trig course. I lost the word there. Now, cotangent is 1 divided by tangent. And tangent is also 1 divided by cotangent. This one is more commonly used. And cosine, if secant is 1 over cosine, cosine is 1 over secant. Now, you're not going to use that often, but the ones that are highlighted in boxes, secant, cosecant, and cotangent, those are the ones that I would commit to memory. You should know those three. So those are the reciprocal identities that you need to be familiar with. So let's say if we wish to calculate secant of pi divided by 3. How can we do so? How can we use reciprocal identities to figure this out? Well, secant, we know it's 1 over cosine. So we got to find the value of cosine pi over 3. And use the unit circle. So pi over 3 is equal to 60 degrees. And at an angle of 60 degrees, this corresponds to a point on a unit circle that's 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So cosine is associated with the x value. Therefore, cosine pi over 3 is 1 half. So 1 divided by 1 half is 2. And so that's the value of secant pi over 3. Now let's try some other examples. So what is cosecant? of 4 pi divided by 3. Feel free to pause the video and try that example. So first, let's draw the circle, or a portion of the unit circle. And 4 pi over 3 is in quadrant 3. Now, the reference angle of 4 pi over 3 is pi over 3. And we know the point that corresponds to pi over 3. It's 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So make sure you know the values in the first quadrant because you can use that to find the values in other quadrants. So 4 pi over 3 will have the same numbers but different signs. In quadrant 3, both x and y are negative. So this corresponds to the point negative 1 half, negative root 3 over 2. So now let's use the reciprocal identity cosecant is 1 divided by sine. So we got to find the value of sine 4 pi over 3. Sine is associated with the y value. So sine 4 pi over 3 is negative root 3 divided by 2. 1 divided by root 3 over 2, you just got to flip the fraction. That's going to be equal to negative 2 over root 3. Now at this point, we need to rationalize the denominator. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by root 3. So the final answer is negative 2 root 3 divided by 3. This becomes the square root of 9, which is 3. So this is the answer. Go ahead and calculate secant of 330 degrees. So go ahead and try that. Now what I like to do is find a reference angle. 330 is in quadrant 4. 
So this is an angle of 330. The reference angle has to be 30. It's 360 minus 30. So we know the angle for 30 degrees, or the values for 30. At 30 degrees, this corresponds to the point root 3 over 2, comma, 1 half. 30 is the same as pi over 6. Now 330 is going to have those same values. The only difference is y is negative, but x is positive. So at 330, this corresponds to a point of root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. And that's why it's helpful to be able to find a reference angle. Because once you find a reference angle, you could find a point on a unit circle. And then from that point, you could find the other point based on what quadrant you're in. You just got to adjust the signs. And that's why the reference angle is so useful. So now let's use the reciprocal identity. Secant is 1 over cosine. So we need to find a value of cosine 330. Now cosine 330 is going to be the x value. That's root 3 over 2. So this is what we have. 1 divided by root 3 over 2 is the same as 2 over root 3. And if you want to see why, view it this way. This fraction is equal to 1 over 1 divided by root 3 over 2. So you can rewrite it as 1 over 1 divided by root 3 over 2. And then using the keep change flip principle, you keep the first fraction the same, change division to multiplication, and flip the second fraction. So in the end, it becomes 2 over root 3. And that's why we're able to simply flip the fraction. At this point, we need to rationalize. So the final answer, just like before, is going to be positive 2 root 3 over 3 instead of a, a negative answer. So that's secant 330. Now for those of you who want access to my complete online trigonometry course, here's where you can find it. Uh, go to udemy.com. And then in the search box, you could just search for trigonometry. And you can see my course is basically the one with the black uh, background. And then here is it. I'm still adding more lectures, but here's what I have so far. Um, introduction into angles, drawn angles, converting degrees into radians, uh, linear speed, angular speed problems, arc length, uh, information on the unit circle, how to evaluate trigonometric functions using the unit circle, uh, right triangle trigonometry, things like SOPATOA. Even you can have video quizzes as well, solving word problems like angle of elevation problems. And then you have the next section, graphing sine cosine functions secant, tangent, inverse trig functions, pretty much all the common stuff that you'll see in a typical uh, trigonometry course, even solving uh, Barron's, verifying trigonometric identities, uh, summing difference formulas, double angle, half angle, and some other things too. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to add some other things as well. So feel free to check it out when you get a chance, and uh, let's continue back to the video. Now let's try cosecant, negative 225. Go ahead and try that problem. So what is cosecant negative 225? Well, let's plot negative 225. So this is negative 90, negative 180, and negative 225. So therefore, it's in quadrant 2. Now, notice the difference between uh, this value, which is negative 180 going this way, and this is negative 225. So you can see the reference angle has to be 45. Also, if you add 360 to negative 225, this will give you positive 135. So this is 135. And 135 minus positive 180, this is positive 180. That will also give you 45. So you can write this as negative 225 or as 135. It's up to you. Those two are coterminal angles. Now the reference angle of 135 is 45, which is in quadrant 1. 
Now for 45, you need to know what the x and the y values are. And it's root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. So now we could find the values for 135 or negative 225. And that corresponds to this point. x is going to be negative, but y will remain positive. So now that we have the terminal point that corresponds to negative 225, we can evaluate cosecant of negative 225. Cosecant is 1 over sine. And sine of negative 225 is the same as sine 135. Coterminal angles have the same trigonometric value. Sine is associated with the y value. So that's going to be positive root 2 divided by 2. If we flip it, it's going to be 2 over root 2. Anytime something is under 1, flip the fraction. Now we need to rationalize it. So this becomes 2 root 2 and the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4 which itself is 2. And these will cancel. So the final answer is positive square root 2. That's cosecant of negative 225. What is secant of negative 7 pi over 6? We have to try a negative angle in radians. So you can master this topic. So let's begin by graphing it. So this is negative pi over 6. And then here is negative 5 pi over 6. And then negative 7 pi over 6 is in quadrant 2. Now negative 7 pi over 6 is in the same location as 5 pi over 6. What you can do is add 2 pi to get the coterminal angle. 2 pi is the same as 12 pi over 6. If you multiply 2 pi over 1 by 6 over 6, this will allow you to get common denominators. So this corresponds to 5 pi over 6. So those are coterminal angles, so they have the same trig value. Now the reference angle for negative 7 pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6 is simply pi over 6. Now the point that corresponds to pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Pi over 6 is 180 divided by 6 which is 30 degrees. So now we can find a point that corresponds to negative 7 pi over 6. In quadrant 2 x is negative but y is positive. So we only have to change the x coordinate. Now secant is 1 over cosine. So now we could find the value of cosine negative 7 pi over 6. And cosine is associated with the x value. So this is going to be 1 over negative root 3 divided by 2, which is negative 2 over root 3. And then if we rationalize it, we're going to get this familiar answer again, negative 2 root 3 over 3. So after a while, you begin to notice some common answers. And if you see an answer that's not common and you have an angle that's in a unit circle, you can quickly identify the wrong answers. Go ahead and evaluate these functions. Secant of 0 degrees and secant of 90. Now to do so, we need to be familiar with some points. And that is the angle 0 and 90 and the xy values that occur at those points. So at 0 degrees, we have the point 1, 0. x is 1, but y is always 0 on the x-axis. On the y-axis, x is 0, but y is going to be 1. So using those points, what is the value of secant of 0 degrees? Now secant is 1 divided by cosine. So we've got to find cosine of 0 degrees. And cosine is the x value. So cosine of 0 is 1 and 1 divided by 1 is 1. So secant of 0 degrees simply has a value of 1. Now what about secant of 90? Secant 90 is 1 divided by cosine of 90 degrees. And cosine of 90, we need to use the x value again, cosine of 90 is 0. So when you get a situation like this, what is 1 divided by 0? And what is 0 divided by 1? 1 divided by 0, if you ever see it, it is undefined. That's what you need to write for your answer.
0 divided by 1 is simply 0. So you can have a 0 on the top of a fraction, but not on the bottom. If you do have it on the bottom, your answer is undefined. So secant 90 simply does not exist. It's an undefined value. Try these. Evaluate cosecant of 180 and also cosecant of 270. So let's draw this again. So here's 180 and here is 270. So at 270, we have the point 0, negative 1. X is always 0 on the y axis. And at 180, y is 0 on the x axis. This is negative 1, comma 0. Cosecant is 1 divided by sine. So we need to use the y value for sine. Sine of 180 is 0. So this is going to be 1 divided by 0. Therefore, cosecant of 180 is undefined. Now, cosecant of 270, that's 1 over sine 270. And sine 270, once again, is the y value. It's negative 1. So 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So that's the value of cosecant of 270. It's negative 1.